trying to talk about that whatever's coming out of my mouth has to do with a, a whole complex of things, some of which I'm aware of, some of which I'm not, my experience, what I've learned, what I've tried, some things that give me pleasure, things I do want to avoid because of pain, it's all up there. But the process of becoming aware of those constraints and predilections and preferences and, uh, and influences, it takes time, but it's worth it because then one's communication can become clear and deliberate. So to move just to where he was a moment ago, do you, do you also have views about the external world? If you're, you know, what happens yes. between people yes. and what things, are, is, are they the same domains or are they quite different? There are different aspects of a similar domain in that what, whatever, since what I'm trying to, I'm working on this, you know, this is something I'm working, it's a work in progress, man. You know, so, but because I'm focused on one individual at a time in the sense that I, I'm the only one who can actually ultimately take responsibility for understand, trying to understand why I think what I think and why I have whatever prejudices or predilections or whatever, you know, it's in my head. It's not out there coming into my head, it's in my head. See, but the problem so, but, but I know, but I'm Yeah, no, but there, there, there's like Machiavelli, and there are people who believe that you could move great crowds. So if you stick totally with the individual, then somebody may mess over the rest of civilization in terms of the crowds and the other groups while you're spending, you know, total time on the individual. And the question is, right. do you have to do you have to look at both? It depends what one's uh, one's goal is. I mean, my goal happens to be. I was once told a story uh, about this uh, uh, Indian teacher who, uh, you know, was, was who taught meditation and was very highly regarded. And he was being interviewed by the Western press, and they said, "Well, why do you do this? Why do you go around teaching this to individuals?" And uh, he said, uh, "Well, so that we experience, you know, this, that the world's at peace." And they said, "Well, look at the world." How can you say that? He said, well, everywhere I go and everywhere my students go, we experience peace. Mm. Like that. It's not quite that, but it's like that. If, 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 if more individuals become clear about the nature of consciousness and, the, 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 and become clear about and able not to simply act on their driven impulses, which is very much like you were talking about, the like pleasure of pain and all that, if we're free, we free ourselves from that as individuals, the more individuals that free, us, free themselves from that, the less we have the strong victimizing weak. That's my view. But it could be money. However, if you have uh, conflicts within yourself and you're fragmented, it would be very difficult for you to be perfect enough to understand yourself. Um, I'm not sure if that's accurate or not. I'm not sure what you mean by fragmented, first of all, so let me ask you what you mean. Fragmented meaning you have several different responses to the same stimulus. And you're not really sure which response is the one you really want to have. And that means you're fragmented. You have, you have doubts and you have conflict. So how can you possibly look within yourself to go find the perfect you to have to, to know what's going uh, on. Well, I mean, I don't think I'm, I, I mentioned anything like a perfect me. I I'm simply that. talking about understanding those influences so that I just don't do something like it. But a lot of people are dichotomy, like and there are a number of people all at once. And it's even been proven in psychology. You can have five different reactions to the same thing. Yeah, that's true. May I, may I respond to that? Yes, please. Hey, I don't believe in psychology or, or psychiatry. Or psych it's all a bunch of bamboozlement. We live in either st stupidity and greed, which we live, or we live in intelligent and benevolence. And that's the Holy Spirit. We all have divine mind and access to higher intelligence to clarify everything. And God is ever present and manifest at all times. And everyone is a genius. But we're, but we're subjected to this constant bamboozlement by a mafia government that, that skirts off with billionaires and know they don't pay taxes and keeps us enslaved in a complete perpetual war. That uh, bullshit. 
And, it's, and we live in, in constant BS and the illusions of our stupidity. And we're not really stepping up and changing. A hundred years ago, Nikolai Tesla screwed in light bulbs in the ground. And we know about eco-friendly energy solutions. Yet they're keeping a lid on it, and we're devastating the planet and ourselves with, with pseudo-food and pseudo-drugs. And everything is a bunch of BS. And it's ridiculous. Six billion people. How do you really feel? Yeah, yeah, don't hold back. How do you really feel? <laughs> yeah, don't hold back. No, Eternal <laughs> argument. I mean, look, that is, a, that's a, to me, that's a very accurate portrayal of what capitalism has wrought. Capitalism, out of control greed, capitalism has wrought havoc upon our society and the world. Who's the greed? The, the, the MTA, you know. Except, except, except about the divine part, but everything else. <laughs> Uh, I, 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 Wait a second, divine is everything. If you don't believe in God and divinity, fine, that's your belief. But the reality is spirit moves everything. Everything is, is either animate or inanimate. And the invisible force of life is spirit. And it's undefinable, and it's untangible, but it's a reality. And that is the reality that everyone agrees upon. In Tahrir Square, in, in all over the Middle East, all over the world, people want what's right versus what's wrong. And all this BS about what's right or left, or Republican or Democrat, or socialist or anarchist, come on. You, you, there's human rights, ethical rights, animal rights, and civil rights. And so, yeah, I, know I, 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 I hear, I hear your, you know, your, your commitment. I'm just saying that uh, at being ethical and civil rights, there's a sense of right or wrong, doing the right or wrong thing need have nothing to do with religion or spirituality. Uh, right. It may be completely independent. One can be a, a, a decent, ethical human being and, and an atheist. So I'm just saying. Of course. That, that one does not necessarily imply the other. For me. Atheism is a religion too. It, it's yeah. an ism, yes. Yes. And I know some atheists that make it obvious that it's a religion. Whatever, atheist or religious fanatic, people believe in karma, the, good, the golden rule, the basic moral conduct of, of respect. Respect for life, respect for yourself, respect for yeah, the people. Either you do, respect yeah, you don't. And people like Cheney are out of control, fracking and mountaintop removal, and all these knucklehead politicians, all of them are criminals. They make tons of money and they sell it to the lobbyists, and they pretend to protect our interests, and meanwhile they're bamboozling us. And, and it's all about, you know, the, the reality is, What's right is right, what's wrong is wrong. Everyone in every language or religious belief knows what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Um, that's, a, that's a complex. And they all <laughs> No, it is a complex statement, but you know, I'm not sure it could be made in that, with, with that much certainty across all religious practices and beliefs. There's some pretty crazy things up there. But um, in essence, yeah, I mean, there's right and it's wrong. Uh, you know, moral rel relativism has impacted um, some of our previous abilities to stand up for what we know is right because we've accepted the assertion that kind of what kind of, if you pardon the expression, trickled down from Einsteinian relativity into popular thought that everything's relative. Well, no, it's not. In my view, there is you know an absolute sense of, of right and wrong that. When that goes, there is a kind of moral anarchy that results, and it's related to the environment we're in now. I, I think. Could I do a thing against? Uh, I don't want to. Uh, do you think uh, the the weapon systems that have existed that's led re technological research by the political leaders all along? Do you think they ever reached a point where they were of such a magnitude, unlike as recently as the Second World War, where we were trying? that if they were to be unleashed in a spasm of hatred, reifying old institutions or whatever we've got out of history, that they are at a point, were they ever at a point, and are they still at a point where if they were to be unleashed, it would mean the end of the entire homo sapiens species or not? Oh, this is a, this is, you know, I know the population. That's the the, the, uh, the actual past. land, the actual land. He says it's past. Yeah. Do you think it's past? Um, well, now that, the, uh, way so the, is, the way it used to be is passed because there have been reductions in arms and all the rest of it. However, <laughs> we now have highly the ability to get the plans online how to build suitcase nukes. We can augment those suitcase nukes with biological weapons. Thank you, biological. Yeah, so, don't forget the AIDS you know, crisis that wiped out homosexual community and black men talk. They're continuing with their germ war called BS. We live yeah. with monsters in our midst. So, 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 so but, just to, yes. at one point it was, 
species lethal. That was a correct assumption. Well, the thing is, well, and well, and well, something well, happened to well, 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 the question is, well, the question is, the entire human species. And yeah, believe, right. And I tell you that um, those, there are those who are in the top 1% that have all the plans and refuges they need to survive almost anything. Taking that into account. So that's not the entire taking species. That's why account. I qualify that. No, but that. taking that into account, and you know, they got the things out in Colorado and everything, and they can be down there for 100 years or something or something. Taking all that into some account, particularly have, bacteria. Some of them have uh, spaces guaranteed, for example. Is there good the International modeling? Space Station. Yeah, I understand. Is there good modeling that could show that that is in fact the case? That I is an existential yeah. new reality in 200,000 years of human experience. Look, there's a whole body of thought and writing that addresses how species terminate. 99.9% mm. right. all of them are extinct. Right. Now, some, some, a lot of it has to do with periodic, you know, catastrophic events of various types. Uh, it's been, you know, there've been several ways where Five, most, most of the, yeah, most of the yeah. species yeah. on the planet have been, you know, wiped out. Yeah. Uh, we're a little different, right? We, we seem intent on doing it to ourselves for some reason. Do you think we could reach consilience even in this one room? Consilience is not, consilience is not being conciliatory. Consilience is not about agreement. Consilience is, is, is at least the way Wilson and I tend to look at it, is that, the, is that looking at the neocortical structures and functions that uh, support the connectivity and commonality between different modes of thought. It's not about agreement in and of itself. So what is it? It's a, a theory of unified knowledge. Unified. But if, if, if we hear, I mean, I, I may have misheard what was going on, but if we hear totally different viewpoints in which no one's in total agreement and some people think they're totally right and others think they're somewhere else, then is that unified knowledge? If we look at physics, here's an example. We look at physics. Uh, over the decades, different forces of physics have been combined. Mm -hmm. So now the one that's the outlier is gravity. There's a lot of reasons for this. We won't go over them. Um, it's like that, only going beyond just physics, beyond just science, but including humanities, including social science, uh, to find at the neural, at the neocortical level, what is it that's the same about these things? Now, what you're talking about is opinion. Well, that's something different, isn't it? Well, the theories, so you are, like, have, you the theories have, are like opinions. You can have two scientists in the same discipline doing the same research in the same lab. They could be twins. And by the way, twin genomes are not identical. Really? Yeah, really. Mm -hmm. so, so, and they could have different opinions about things. So they were, I'm really, it's really looking at two different aspects of human nature. And I don't want, I, I get that mm -hmm. a lot because it's not about conciliatory and agreement in and of itself. It's about the biological structure that gives rise to disparate intellectual and creative expression. Mm -hmm. but, but, but looking at similarities, it's a little bit like semiotics. A little bit. Yeah. A little bit. Because it's, 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 to look at the, yeah, but the, the key thing is, again, rather than being a philosophical approach, although it has a philosophical component, it's looking ultimately at the, neocor the neocortex as the focal point for finding the commonality. It's a that's, state, the that's, biological state. Yeah, that's exactly it. It's, it's biology is more biology, yeah. ultimately. Mm. Thank you. Good questions. Mm. Are you optimistic, pessimistic for the human process? Both. Both. Okay. <laughs> that, that covers it all. I, I don't mean to be like yeah. silly about no. it. No. I'm optimistic because I know it's possible. Yeah. Um, I know I'm optimistic because I can, you know, I, I, I can see what's coming and to some degree. I'm pessimistic because of what we tend to do to each other and to those who have more or less fortunate than us. And I don't mean people, not we, you know, I'm talking about what our friends here. The government. The people. <laughs> but, but the government is a name for a collection of people who are doing these things, right? And a lot, you know, it, you know what I mean. But yes, Selfish people, bureaucrats people making believe, money in a free ride, pretending people, to serve the public. People who believe in it. Gangsters. Life, people who believe that life is a zero-sum game. Yeah. And that everyone That's else scary. has to lose for them to win. That's essentially, the, you know, the, the, the 
fundamental problem. There's a question over there. Uh, my question is based on what you were talking about the government. Uh, as a human being, the way we process information and how we learn, can an individual or a group of people dictate of how all the countries are to the past being prologue. Thank you. Uh, I think it, it, it is possible to be free from that for a number of reasons. Um, evolving consciousness, evolving awareness, evolving um, technologies that enable individual freedom. I think it, you know, it is possible. The past does not have to be prologue. Uh, you know, I mean, look, uh, this whole thing about capitalism and dialectic and you know, Marx always said, yes, technology will free the world. Well, yeah, except that capital always reacquired control of the new technology. And we do have to... But we're at, we are at a point where that is not necessarily true this time over the next 10 to 40 years. Okay, thank you. We do have to anchor the history, don't we? Um, well, it, yes, but yeah. if only perhaps to not repeat it. But well, he, also he, to ha Harold, he, he wants to continue oh, that sorry, question. Oh, sorry, sorry, go ahead, Harold. Yeah, but at the same time, because I read, I worked with one of the co Operation here in the United States, seven years in the United States. Um, my understanding, um, Microsoft, which is one of the big companies, uh, big uh, corporation that produces the software, computer, and so on, they came out with Window uh, Vista. And Window Vista, for my, I had the rumor saying that it was too much implemented by the government in order to track and understand people who contains information in computer. But it was something they call classified because they didn't want people to know after, part, after September 11, which Microsoft was part of the theory that um, if you buy my, a computer with Windows Vista, anyone can track you regardless of where you are and how you kept your information. <laughs> you don't need that anymore. The iPhone keeps a geo record of every place your phone Three quarters of the world population have uh, a cell phone. So the same question is coming that does how somehow the corporation and this uh, institution uh, detects how we live today. Absolutely. It's <laughs> that and so much worse. Right. So, so I mean, it's Fahrenheit 451, it's THX 1138, it's all of this. There's, there's one minor difficulty, I think, with your uh, optimistic view. Just one? Yes. Uh, when you were talking about physics and uh, things with uh, gravity, apparently some people think that, you know, Gravity requires additional dimensions to comprehend. Uh, uh, possibly, 
a peaceful existence for humans may require additional dimensions that we are unable in our dimensions of brain to actually encompass. So we may be uh, doomed to live in some kind of weird uh, domain. You know, I don't, I, it's a fun question. <laughs> um, I, I don't, you know, the whole, the whole thing about string theory and end theory and multiverse, um, these are not, no one actually who practices those mathematical investigations actually believes them to be true. Right. Not the, not the record. No, I'm not worried about so physics. No, no, I'm no, only talking about human brains. Right. Uh, <laughs> Make sure Gaku disagrees with you on that. Yeah. Right. Uh, well, not really. I mean, even if you really speak to him, and now he's not on the on camera. You, really, you know, he can't believe in it because it's like it's a mathematical uh, metaphor. It's a story in, in symbolic terms. It's it it doesn't pretend. Now, there is some very early research that has to do with the, the Large Hadron Collider and some of the things it might uncover when it goes through 14 gigavolt, uh, electron volts of energy in a couple, few years that may be able to shed light on the molecular scale. But as of now, it's just a story. So, and, and yes, and gravity being weaker because it actually travels between multiverses and all the so do you think we'll have to do gigavolts of, of uh, shooting into the brain in order to move us to a higher So dimension? you're just a troll man, right? Is that the <laughs> Sometimes. So, um, yeah, no, I think if we can produce one Gandhi and one Mother Teresa, I think he had his problems. Like, but, you know, or one Mother Teresa or one Dalai Lama, even with all his watches, you know, whatever it might be, we can produce more. If we have one country like Bhutan where they have a gross domestic happiness index, we can have more, right? It's a question of, of, of individual and group coordination to exert some type of social pressure to ena enable and pursue making those changes. And that part is what's difficult now because of the extreme, the extreme imbalance of power and access to power that, that exists. Even though people aren't aware of it. People aren't. You know, the companies now are hiring people and not paying them, calling them internships, even though they're not interns. Because they realize, hey, if they just want to work and do something, we won't pay them, they'll accept it. So, you know, it's further and further exploitation that does not go well. But at the same time, that is a kind of environment where people like the Gandhis and the rest of the you know, historical and other figures tend to emerge. Okay, I, I want to go so, back. We, we will see. Excuse me, you know what? Congress is debating the, uh, the budget now. I mean, how are we going to get out of a $14 trillion uh, yeah, and cutting deficit? Cutting public services is just so not, it's so much bullshit. It's just so not a solution. Economy, the whole knows, economy is artificial, right? It's everybody, just completely. Everybody knows why they're doing it. Everybody knows why they're doing it. Uh, you know, it's not going to. That the point is that it's no longer a representative democracy, not really. Uh, so and then the whole thing is based on paper, a trillion dollar debt will never get out of that. I mean, it's ridiculous. It could be settled tomorrow. Right. I don't think it's based on paper. 42 right. cents of every dollar spent is borrowed. So it can't really be on paper. Getting back to communication. 42 cents of every How dollar spent is borrowed. Right. You, you, you can't hear you presented all this stuff. So we are paying out in the rest. How do we use what you just told us? Because I'm, I'm looking for my own personal reasons. I'm, again, reinventing myself. Yeah. And so. You were saying the permanent reinvention. I seem to be into that, yes. And so, uh, but part of it is communications. I've been exploring exactly what you're talking about in terms of how to get messages out there. And I want to not get into the framing mode. I mean, I, I'm somewhat good at it. I don't want to do yeah, that. I, I could, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you made me admit that I, you know, I've had a change. So. <laughs> but uh, but I'm, I'm looking for another way to make a more effective communication. You've given us some tools here. And I find that interesting. I don't think consilience really falls into that, but I think maybe by dropping a paradigm and whatever. One of the paradigms, okay, like uh, the IMF just said that we're going to. Uh, be surpassed economically by uh, China and by 2016 came as a big shock to a lot of people. And uh, it's not a shock, man. It, it, you know, the jobs so to the come back to this media. country. We start with, with, when our when our minimum wage falls as low as, the, as it is in China and other and other third world you know, environments, India. 
when it's that when the pay scale is accepted at that low level, there'll be jobs there again. That's what the goal is. Kane said you're going to be in front of the But anyway, the other half, you know, we can talk about that uh, if you want later, because the other part of my life is actually doing just that. Just Could I interject uh, that uh, we're working with, with companies and individuals who need to reposition their communications in a way that uh, is different from what they've been doing, not just in terms of the actual message, but actually how they're doing. Could I interject in that? Lord Keynes uh, said in a letter to the grandchildren written in 1930 that he projected ahead to their maturity, that'd be about now, and he said you're going to be confronted, humanity, with something that's very hard to fathom, massive technologically induced unemployment, that the ability to produce an overwhelming cornucopia of product, product is not going to need the human labor input to production and the only way we have of distributing demand to the vast majority of the people of the world is through their job within a corporate estate that's all the corporate assets and the technologies all owned by a tiny plutocratic class and every political entity. How are we going to get over that problem if only they talk about we have to get jobs for everybody on the estate where the assets are not owned by all the people, it's owned by a tiny plutocratic class? It's a lot like what hope we um, you know, it, it he's is here. He's still here. He's still here. He's just wandering around. A lot of it is diversionary tactics, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not about how to cut social services. It's not about all the other stuff that's in the press. That is being, no, it's about do, using diversionary tactics to convince people that really, but they're really not. They're, they're really not just you know uh, diverting wealth upwards. No, 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 no. It's all the same. That's all it is. That's all that's going on. Well, no, but it's structural production. that the input of labor to production is moving to the vanishing point. Well, this, and that's the well, only way we have the distributing demand, to time. clear the market. I mean, yes, the evolution is definitely towards less of a need for labor. human manual labor. Right. Absolutely. Not only manual, intellectual as well. You can do things, you get an algorithm, 500,000 people can do what an, an algorithm can do. You're not going to be able well, to... Well, that do. actually is going to get a lot worse once full-stream AI comes on in like 20 to 30 years. That's yeah. going to be like us with faster. Mm -hmm. um, so that's also, that's also true. So the question is, does the human being have an intrinsic value or not in the eyes of other human beings? Well, if he had a... If he had not, had, uh, then we're, we're, if, we're, if that value cannot be instilled, it doesn't look too good in those with, you know, the limited number of those with wealth and power, then... Is there any hope that we ought to, instead of, uh, we ought to democratize the private property ownership of capital instruments producing wealth to everybody, rather than have it linked only to a small group of people who are accumulating wealth and growing that way? Is there some, any hope for democratizing ownership as a means of distributing demand to the masses of the people, if only so that there'll be some way for the people to clear the market of what can be produced? That and where, if be, that is uh, the case, be, where is it being I'm advanced? Say, that would be an enlightened state, and I don't see that. Only country happen. in the world that I know of that tried to do that at an at a, at a national level was Muammar Gaddafi's Libya. They were doing exactly that, and that may be an advance of uh, thinking, much like the United States was an advance of the feudal order. And it may be there's an ideological reason that we're bombing the bejesus out of them now. Could be. I don't know. That's a kind of far out thing that nobody can well, understand. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. Yes, it uh, is. You know, I mean, we, we are, you know, living the Wolfwood doctrine now, right? Mm, where, yeah. You know, which basically yeah. is, you know, America, the American century where the, the basic approach is uh, to uh, attack countries that may pose a challenge, may pose a threat. Yeah. Well, that means anybody, doesn't it? Well, uh, well, I, I just say it's structural, and it doesn't seem to be addressed. He thinks we're going to be able to create jobs with minimum wage or whatever, Forget and that's enough. not that's adequate to what the future is. There's enough part. money in this world so that no one has to suffer. Okay, it's not thank about you. jobs. Oh, I like that. That's we've transcended material scarcity. Politics, anchoring to history, having something that's going to be not only liberating of the people, of everybody and the ecology, but also will include those responsible for the uh, outdated inherited institutions. They'll have to be subsumed, but it's not going to be overthrown. You've got to anchor it to history. So you've got to have everybody included in it.
So you need an ideology that can include everybody, and we don't have it politically. Uh, there's a lot of stuff. It's about you know convincing a lot of people that being you know like uh, an alpha male is no longer necessary. Mm. You know, it's about it's about convincing people that having all the toys is necessary. Yeah. It's, you know, it's all of that stuff, and it comes down to individuals who think that way, who band together, who then affect control over access to resources. I wish we had some emerging in the political dialogue and the leadership. Well, there was one. The you know, there was Alan Grayson. You know, he was different. Well, he didn't get reelected. He was, you know, so yeah. respected him to be, be, be a district part. But nonetheless, you know, he was different. What about the idea of forming capital in a way where the, uh, the ownership of the capital, private property, is owned democratically rather than plutocratically? Right, and instead of just arguing that those uh, people will make production and the people can have a job on their own right, that, that, That's basically a variation on a, a kind of Trotsky-based oh, permanent revolution of a working... Uh, a I don't think so. They wanted to, do, it's, it's they wanted to do away with... Pri I'm talking about private property. So something that can hoist the capitalist system on its own petard is what that's I'm what getting at. From the progressive property is that there, you know, there's, there's a working class party that is in perpetual revolution so that no plutocracy ever emerges. Uh, I mean, you know, I mean, but that... Yeah, but you got an open plateau and everything, you, you did away with the private sector, and you put it all in the government, that doesn't work. You have one that can anchor it to a capitalist because system. Because it still comes back to individuals who will wait for that and see it as an opportunity to increase their wealth. You know, it, it, so, it, so it's, you know, and that's where the balance of power control, technology control, uh, one last little question. James Joyce had Daedalus say in, uh, that history is a nightmare, and you could add of injustice, from which we're attempting to awaken. Do you think we may be at a moment of awakening to a new epistemological, ontologic reality that will make possible liberation that has never been able to be realized? Wait, before you answer that question. Lack of technological development. Ah, I read that one. Yeah, you got to your answer. You have to answer that I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I know. I don't mean that. I mean, you know, you have, you, you have a very noble focus, and um, do I think I think that human humanity has always had individuals that seem to indicate that humanity is you know, evolving and some are waking up. Yeah. And um, do I think that the future, the near future, holds any more promise than ever before? Um, Both for destruction and for liberation. And as Asimov said, this is the defining generation out of 10,000 generations. This is the defining generation. We're either going to, you know, have a thing that moves toward liberation, or we're going to join entropy and destroy the whole process of conscious it's evolution. We are, you know, we are a negative species. We yeah. create order. We create this order. But, you know, you're right. There is a bifurcation. You think the law, uh, second law of thermodynamics holds? All systems move toward entropy to the limits of the system? Well, and are we in a closed system or open? In a semi-closed system, the negative entropy is possible. Yeah. Uh, because in a semi-closed system, uh, uh, a subsystem can take energy in and create order. Also, the string theory... That's what we do. I mean, we, don't, we create stuff, right? We, this is, you know, we, we fight entropy. Yeah. Well, Fuller said we were an, we were an anti-entropic function in the universe was the biological evolutionary process that gave increased pattern of conscious understanding to the process of which we are a part. Well, so right. there's, a, there's right. an anti-entropic function in the biological evolution. Yeah, same, yeah. yeah. But whether it's a closed system or open, if you've got string theory now that you can go either way. There may be well, parallel no, no, universe. We're going to forget about string theory and parallel universe. You think so? Uh, it's yeah. unknown. It's oh, yeah, yeah, it's it synergistic. Right. The universe is synergistic. And even if the equations work, it doesn't mean, like I started saying before, it doesn't mean that it corresponds to physical reality. Uh -huh. They may work. Uh -huh. It doesn't mean it's real. Uh -huh. Is it possible we're going in the other direction, which is that that small group has decided that the global world is primary, that even America is overpopulated? So if we look at noble populism, yeah. so, so oh, yeah, sure. is this possible that we've been yeah, I wasn't stage planning on wiping out human this beings? This level of political discourse, but yes, yes, absolutely. We know, I mean, look, it was in the, it actually hit the press, what was it, about three months ago, where some of the Goldman Sachs criminals mm -hmm. were yes. quoted as saying, they didn't even mind, saying that, oh, they had an idea, you know, let's, uh, if we could just burn down half of the foreclosed houses, it would increase the value of the remaining ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Well, what kind of people think like that? You're not going to get vision from the Goldman Sachs. No. Or from the politician. That's from a completely deregulated form of pure capitalism. They are correct. And that's the scary part. Yeah, that's right. That's completely divorced from the fact that it's still a human being that they're talking about whether they're talking about Okay, money. What is money today? Because, I mean, we're talking about money or a horse swallowing its own tail. Okay. Now, I'll tell you what kind of people they are. Nazis, you. In, 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 in order to achieve maximum productivity, hey, why not have free labor and work them until death, and you'll have the maximum productivity? So, what, so, so what's so different from someone saying, burn down half the foreclosed houses? Well, you see, you're absolutely right about that, because, in fact, that's how it used to be. And that's why, especially after the Triangle Fire, things started changing in terms of work protection. And in fact, it's heading back towards it saying they want to raise the retirement age until we just work until we die. Yeah. This is not acceptable. Not acceptable. Not Everyone acceptable has to back. Somehow. Yeah. But everyone's capabilities are. Yes. Sir. Uh, I got a thing I want to talk on this. I think it's still a new paradigm for uh, comprehending human nature. Oh. Here it comes. I got three. What you got? Special. I didn't publish. What you got? Well, wow, this is not really a big thing. This is. Oh, I should sit down or oh, no. <laughs> Is that a neglected item in the comprehension of the human nature? Oh, is it a red dish? Is it a chair? You're close. Can you imagine a thing like this? The sun already. I got to put the sun in the human nature. You don't have to figure out something like that. Breakthrough in human nature analysis. Boy, to the periodic table and analysis. You got the human nature sorted dramatically. Yes, I can imagine. So what do you think would take a lot of that? It would take a lot more work in we now in genetics and neuroscience, but a lot more. We we used to think oh we had a double helix. Wow, great, that's great. But you know that's a machine metaphor a deterministic metaphor, the, gene, the genome is nothing like that, right? There's all this epigenetic stuff, introns, extrons, gene swapping with other members of the same species, different species, multiple gene, one gene doing different things, multiple genes doing the same thing depending on what's going on with the transfer RNA. Then in the neocortex, there's the, neuro, there's the neuron itself, there are the cytoskeletons, the, the microtubular cytoskeletons within the neuron. There's RNA, there's RNA, there's molecular memory, there's genetic components in long and short term memory. It's, we, we're starting to know about this stuff, but that's what it would take in my view. Okay, now, for my turn, I'll tell you what I got to do. Oh, yeah. Now, uh, the part of the brain you kept talking about, can I describe it? Yeah. Most of the yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know if we're public access to business. But, uh, if you can picture the neural structure action from the spinal cord, once it gets to right here on the neck. Uh, on class? Nope, no whispering. No, the spinal cord is about. No, I when it enters. And then it enters the right hand side, right the hind brain, then there's the midbrain, then there's the forebrain, and the neocortex and the hind So, midbrain is different things. Well, I mean, the ascending reticular activating system. Oh, right, the limbic system, the reticular activating formation. And the hypothalamus reaches out there. Oh, okay. So, what, what I'm talking about. Thank you. Go ahead, it's going. Is a key, a breakthrough, a breakthrough, <laughs> is in the sorting of the network when it goes on in that portion of the brain. That would be interesting. To sort that network. Now, I attended a seminar uh, among the planet's heavy thinkers on networking, and as the number of elements increase, and even some of the parameters of the qualities of the connections, not just simple connections, uh, it becomes
becomes a staggeringly difficult problem, even for Mother Nature to figure out how to manage. Anyhow, so here's the great thing. What, uh, what comes down to be the relationship in terms of time of us and the sun. What is the time relationship? Do you have a sense of it? Between Homo sapiens? No, no, no. I mean, life, actually, but in particular, animals. Between the transfer of energy, the energy of the sun, and here we are, how time is, uh, what the relationship is with respect to time. And that's my break. What it comes down to is that um, the geometry of our corporal relationship with the sun, with the angle, and all that kind of stuff. The, the time function is roughly in, within, well, I first identify the middle third of the northern temperate zone. I mean, that's the northern hemisphere. So that middle third. Do you have a sense of how that goes with time, how it fluctuates throughout the year? I can only think of things that, uh, for example, the, the, um, the occurrence of what sometimes is called seasonal affective disorder, how in Scandinavia and countries yeah. that are near the, let's say, the North Pole that have extended winters, there's an increased rate of suicide. They have very harder. heavy theologies, you, you know. Um, that, so the relationship between the amount of photons being absorbed by the melanin in the skin could be correlated with uh, emotional content. Something like that is what I'm guessing. That's good. Uh, we're warming up to the concept that uh, most animals of the various species in creation have particular times of year to work. And what I'm claiming is that what is special and extra mysterious about human nature is the variability that that female uh, can. Wrapping her eggs throughout the span of the year. And so humans and the male, um, got, they, all, they can do it. So we can conceive throughout the circle. And the variety of human nature is to be seen in the mathematics of that circle. This is what it comes down to. The, the fluctuation goes from 200 calories per square meter per day to 800. So you have a four to one, that's pretty dramatic. And the, the shape of the curve is well approximated as a sine cycle. We've got one cycle here. And here's the punchline. Well, some people don't appreciate it, but it brings the punchline. Phase. Earth phase is your phase on that sine cycle. And therefore, that's such a mathematically basic thing. The sun time relationship phase on that. So birthday is important not because of what happens on the day you're born, but because phase is the dimension of the shape of the sine cycle that your neural network uses as it does its job, figuring out how to interconnect everything, uh, which occurs in the first year. So if what you say is is accurate, you know, it's, you know I'm, true, I'm, I have to be true. true. Well, true is a, is a very complex word. <laughs> but to be true, yeah, yeah. Kind of like you know, them horrible part. These yeah, cannot be proved to be not accurate, or you know whatever. Right. You know. So, um, what? So you're suggesting that uh, that literally, in a very simplistic way of summarizing what you're saying, that human beings can be in and out of phase. Yeah. Right. So, uh, and being in phase has certain um, emotionally uh, emotional activation characteristics. Being out of phase has more randomness. Uh, possibly characterizing uh, the, the synchrony of the reticular activating formation with the higher brain centers that tend to integrate, that have to integrate that into the prefrontal cortex. Well, it all gets integrated, and in what I hear as a possible way of languaging that is um, modalities and um, different modalities triggered in the modalities. modalities within the lower. Basically, what I'm offering, though, is that language would be uh, the parameter.
you have to include though the interface with the model system operation too, right? Because it's bi it's bidirectional in terms of the four level is 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 a part of the game. So a real plan is embraced as close as possible by all this neural structure. You've got the frame design here, and you've got the no, I'm here. Right? It's really true. Anybody we're we're together. I mean I don't want to touch it, but uh, get as close Yeah, but it's anchored to some of the other brain structures, you know, the hypothalamus. Now that's the one that they're pointing to now for what you're talking about, the interaction with the hormones and the emotions. Yes, exactly. So that is perfect. And here's a kicker. Oi. Oi. For all those religious atheists out there, that uh, it turns out that the Bible has a uh, monumental offering in this regard, and it offers us the way to achieve the Aquarian age in ways that even I, who had been living through it, didn't figure out how to spend the focus on my mouth and say, hey guys, here's how to actually pull off the Aquarian Age. It's right there in Genesis 49 16, the secret code. And I had even broken the code. But it comes down to recognizing that the way to save our legal system, not to mention our society in general, is right there in Genesis 49 16. That there is a talent for, for being a judge, a good judge, in those people born under the assignment of the Aquarius, that we should push aside our legal system as just some needless literary bullshit and offer their intuitive gifts uh, full expression, and we would then be amazed to be a people of justice. You know, that's sort of, that's interesting, you know, reminds me of other things as well. For example, um, you know, we have more lawyers and judges in Japan. There are more judges than lawyers. There's not just turns out little things like that. More um, judges than lawyers? Mm -hmm. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, other things, too, that, you know, we all know that theoretically that um, the law is the embodiment theoretically of justice, and yet we know that not to be the case. So, I'm with you. No, I did study law. I just said law um, from the beginning as uh, Atticus, and they played along as a fancy show. My view of law is, I think my view of law is that it's only necessary because we haven't developed the ability yet to be completely self-determined in a way that is not driven by wanting all the flint arrowheads. You know, mm -hmm. uh, you know what I mean? That, no, I'm with you there. And, and in particular, one of the helps, I think, of this first day paradigm shift is in, in the sorting of human nature. Uh, out of democratic principles, we usually say there's good and bad in everybody, and uh, we don't take sides if there's some really bad people. Oh, I, I say there's good and bad in everybody, but I definitely take sides. So in the, in the Old Testament, uh, the sorting of the twelve occurs in, in Genesis 49. That uh, you do say to stone to death your local astrologer. So oh, not, well, not, that, that, okay, astrologer, the better came up. But I, I, well, yeah. I'm saying let's rescue birthday from us. Well, that, that would be good because my mind, here's my position on astrology. I'm probably no, going to have to do it. No, it's a joke, though. It's, it, 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 it's, it's not a joke. It's, it's uh, Rodney Dangerfield's uh, film, um, Back to School. Yeah. When he's sitting with, uh, I forget her name, the actress, you know, the love, the love interest in the restaurant, and some of them are talking about astrology, he says, Astrology? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an earth sign, my ex sign, my ex wife is a, a water sign, together we make mud. Well, there's a <laughs> common use of those two. Well, it's that's just one, but it's okay. good. What, what I've discovered, frankly, six months apart is the proper best relationship for marriage, generally. And when I encourage people lately to is to arrange for their meeting a large number of such people so they can see the pattern. Because typically you just meet one and you're zoned and you fall in love and wow. But if you had 10 to pick from, you might even pay attention to other yeah, people. But, 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 but then you'd have to move, move, move to Utah and wear a long underwear. You know, a big underwear. So let's get this. Let's, let's, let's pick this up. Okay. Well, I, I, mean, I also, I also, you know, 
we'll probably get close to closing, right? Well, we've yes. got a little time yes. left on this well, table. You do more, it's up to you. I'm going to tell the string theory. Okay. 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 <laughs> a piece of rope goes into a bar hmm. and uh, goes up to the bartender and says, I'd like a drink, please. The bartender says, I'm sorry, we don't serve strings here. <laughs> so, so the string goes into the, like, you know, goes outside and, like, rips up one of its ends and makes a knot out of itself and then goes back in and goes up to the bar and says, excuse me, I'd like a drink. And the bartender says, well, wait a minute. Uh, I just told you we don't serve strings. See, you are a string, aren't you? Yeah. And uh, the string says, no, I'm afraid not. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, oh, corny. Oh, good, good, good. Yeah. Well done. I'm afraid I'm not. not. <laughs> I don't know. We could do. We're just coming to the end of a tape. So maybe we get. Uh, go ahead. Talk. Right, one more story. story. Mm. Let's, well, let's, one story. Let's, one little story. No, I'd rather really use it to see if there are any other last questions. Yeah, is there questions? We got five, ten minutes left. We could. But in terms of this question about marriage, do you say no strings attached? Oh, correct. Well, I'd like to offer a blessing in the spirit of love from God, ever present, manifest. There is higher forces at work, and spirit is invisible. How do you me about this? <laughs> the reality is, uh, we don't know what's going on, but first mother, blessings in life, great energy, animals. There's an old... There's there, a, there's a, there's a, there's a, how, wait, there is a question here. All right, question, by all means. About the absoluteness of the DNA, I, some Israeli scientists were saying it's not absolute, and I'm shocked. In what sense? Uh, that the DNA signature's not accurate, so I have a friend, a good friend, Is our DNA mutating and expanding? Yeah, so he emails me back and he says, open secret, my best DNA guys. And I said, what's the problem? He says, open secret, my best DNA guys. Which was kind of, uh, when you were talking about string theory and people who were really knowing what reality was, can be dismissive of a lot of what the public gets. And what the public gets is this is accurate. So this may be an open secret, my best DNA guys. And also somebody it's, it's, it's a lot more than that. Um, the early understanding of uh, the, the genome was that it was, like many other early understandings of a lot of things, you know, this could be one, of, one of the main mean that we carry in us when we're talking about the physical universe. It's deterministic, right? Aristotelian determinism, you know, uh, you know prime cause, distal cause, it works according to law. All of, um, we know from quantum physics that there may be a form of quantum determinacy, but basically the universe is not necessarily deterministic. So, uh, when you're talking about something like the genome, it turns out that not just, it, it changes in an individual's lifespan. You know, it, it mutates in its own and changes in its own self-instructed self, um, way. There's, there's a whole new branch of epigenetics. Yes, yes, around yes. Around and within the genome at smaller levels of space. I'm a simple person. People are going to prison over DNA samples. Yeah, that's going to actually... should be liberated from death row, for God's sake. Thank God for Hillary Swank and convictions. Exactly. I got a chance here. So what do you think about this? This is... This is, this is, this is I, I, well, man, I think that um, I it's think the, should be basically... About this. Yeah, they should. And it's basically a statistical uh, argument. Um, when a genetic determination is made of that sort, it's it's probabilistic. It's not uh, binary, one and zero. You write back to who's the father. Right. Well, you know, it, that's not good enough. That's pretty and, much. And, and yet they've got these DNA samples, and then you've got the. Uh, the it's not quite that simple, though. It's like it, it, you know, they're. they're I, 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 I understand. In the world not, of probability. No, I'm, but what, what I'm saying. In a, Yeah, that's been going on for a while, and it's a bit of a problem. Who is going to stand up for this? That's a good question. Well, you and me and everyone who speaks up, 
Somebody's got something to say here. Here's somebody got something to say. He's got something to say. He's got. Something. Let him say he hasn't talked. It's a very good question because it's it's one it's one instantiation of instantiation when you take a complex probabilistic body of knowledge and water it down and make simple rules for people to understand, and that worked its way back into a different community, like the legal community, and now it's essentially. Uh, they're, they're drinking water down wine, if you will. It's not the real deal. So there's something, yeah, there's, and it's not just in genetics, it's, well, it's it a lot out. of it. Let's put it out to the audience. Well, you just did. And I'd like to offer that we say that GMOs is blasphemous. How mm -hmm. dare we take millions of years of evolution and reconfigure the genetics of a vegetable? Excuse me, I want a real tomato. I don't want some man made artificial. Okay. Pseudos. Now, this guy had some. Said about that, right? What about so this? Call, call Talk. Let. let let this guy ask his question. He hasn't talked all night. I'm just asking for referring to what the lady is saying. What you're saying, I mean, there is one thing to say that DNA signature are not 100% yeah, okay. correct because all, you always have some kind of a small chances that there is. A, I think it's wrong. I don't know. <laughs> the other question is if you can base a legal conviction based on the. DNA sample in the site of, let's say, murder scene or whatever. That's an, another type of question. Yeah, exactly. Sure, everyone has an individual DNA, and if that blood is in that guy, that's obvious, that's proof. Well, no, but I mean, they are two different questions. They're related by the fact that the probabilistic nature of the genome is being collapsed into a binary nature for the purposes of legal decision. So that's where the connection point is. I, I, I understand. Yes, yes, but it's not just a community, it's holding our whole society together. The court the judiciary, the law. Part of the problem is that we need to look at the law itself, because the question is whether or not the judicial system, based on our present constitution, itself does not need a full heart. So to have uh, a, the inclusion of an element like a DNA as the law, um, it sort of complicates a complicated situation. I think the whole thing needs to be, you know, from the jury system on, the whole damn thing needs to be thrown out. Yeah, of course. They have no one. They're illegal. The thing is, there is potential. For example, there's long term potential. I'm going to say something that I know I'm sure you're going to yell at me about this. But, uh, for example, as we learn to understand, again, remember, neocortical value. So, um, we now have the ability to read using a minimum, uh, all, all, next to non-invasive techniques, using lasers of a certain frequency and whatever, to read what one neuron is doing. And soon wow. we'll be able to write to it. Wow. Is, that can be scary, okay, fine. Yeah. But the point is that as we understand more and more what's happening, not on gross fMRI levels, which are just the kind of the impressionism <laughs> of neuroscience, right? Yeah. Uh, but more very specifically what's transpiring. When we can in fact look through that person's eyes in terms of memory and see him or her committing that crime. Now, that brings all kinds of privacy issues into play. But it does away with the probabilistic problem of using DNA. What's the problem with using DNA? But it has its own, it has its own problems as well. Because memory is not like little snapshots. We reinvent and modify memory every time. He's got all something, even though it's not a way of doing it. He's good. So, in other words, every solution has its own absolute thing. Now it's genetics. At one point, it'll be a little more Just ask. Speak up, honey. Dr. Michelin, Raphael Michelin, discovered THC in 1969 in psychoactive ingredient in marijuana, and he talks about the importance of forgetting something should be forgotten. It's, it's, that's, a, that's another very interesting question, because in essence... Of course we have, have to forget to process the blood. Right. So we can't remember everything. We actually, we actually do remember it again. We just don't know that we remember it. Um, you know, leaving aside the whole thing about regression therapy and all the way that the people under regression therapy actually unconsciously invent memories that please the therapist and all of that stuff. That's yeah. something else. Um, but the, you know, the 
fact that certain forms of autism, you know, autistic savants, do remember everything means that the brain is capable of doing so. So whether or not, you know, there's a, there's a great story. Yeah, My true story, where are we? They're not, they're not, no, they're not.